Yeah. <laughs> I have to make this video because people are saying they can't believe the kind of stuff that happens to me. Well, I can't either. I don't know why people come at me. And I've been sick and my eyes are messed up because of sinuses. I've had a sinus headache for a couple days. So I look kind of rough. And I'm going to look rough if I put some of the clips of me at the dealership in there. I'm looking pretty rough. So I have a warranty for my Jeep through Dodge, Jeep, Chrysler, Galliana, Dodge, Jeep, Chrysler, something like that. Um, three weeks ago, I went in because my brake light and my uh, check engine light were on. So I go in to get it checked out. Pull up, the guy, young kid, comes in real quick. Oh, it's going to be 160 check that light and 160 check that light. So he said it was going to be $320 just to diagnose whatever's wrong with my car. And I said, no, it's not. I have a warranty. He goes, well, you, we have to spend an hour of time to figure out what's wrong with the car. Okay, so I know that's a lie because I know they just plug that thing in and it tells you what's wrong with the car. And I said, no, I have a warranty. I pulled out the paperwork. My warranty's right here. It had a picture of a brake uh, sign. It said brake and uh, suspension, something brake. And then it had the picture of the uh, check engine light. I was like, look, see here and here. Those two lights are right here in the book as cover. Well, what if if we find something under there that uh, isn't covered, like say a rodent chewed something. I'm like, what the heck? Why are they talking about a freaking rodent? I was like, there's no rodent. It's a check engine light and a brake light. And he's dying trying to get me to agree that if they happen to find something that's not covered under the warranty before they give me my keys back I have to give them $360 just to look okay the $360 he's trying for the first time if they found something anything need to be fixed there's another hundred dollars so I've been $420 because the hundred dollars I got a deductible of just the hundred dollars. So four hundred and twenty dollars. No, that's not what my warranty says. So I asked them, well, just put well, you know what? We argued. And then he kept trying for it. He goes, okay, fine, and then 160. He went from 320 to 160. And I said, no, I'm only playing what my warranty says. It's a hundred dollars. So he finally walks away, goes to the machine, looks up my warranty and goes, hey, you got a warranty, so it's a hundred dollars. Okay, at that point, this is the first time I brought this car in. I've had it not even, maybe two years. I'm like, what? The guy that sold me the car pushed me to get the warranty. I said, I don't want the warranty. I don't, you know, I'll fix something as it comes up. The expensive warranty. He gave the whole salesperson spiel of, we can't finance you the car unless you get the warranty. You have to put the warranty on it, which that makes no sense. And they get you with that. And I've had other people. I had a girl in my chair when I was doing her hair. She was on the phone arguing with her people or the warranty. And one of the guys actually told her, well, don't say anything that I told you, but you should never buy that warranty. Basically, it's nothing. You're paying extra money, and they, when you pull in, this is another thing that ticked me off. When they kept saying, he kept saying it's $320, then suddenly it drops to $160. Then he pulls up my... uh warranty and then it's a hundred none of that's in writing so they just make up what they think they can get out of you make you agree to pay it and then I told him this too I was like I'm not agreeing to pay that I don't know nothing about cars I could pull up and be like oh okay fine because I'm sure you won't find anything I'm sure everything's under warranty and you just make something up I wouldn't know what I was looking at even if and nowadays I guess they don't even show you you pull up, they tell you they're going to charge you over your uh, warranty just to look at your car. You give them the keys. They go back there, fix whatever, tell you what they fix, and tell you, well, you agreed to pay this much, so you got to pay this much, and you're deductible. So I'm glad that's how it works nowadays. I bought two cars before, both used, but through them, through that same galley on a place. And anytime I needed to use my warranty, I pulled in, gave them the keys. They checked it, they came back, told me what was wrong, told me if it was under warranty or not, and at that point I decided what, did I, want, what I wanted to do. 
I'm feeling like it's scamming because how do I go to the same place for years and buy two cars, three cars from them total, and I'm getting treated like this this time? And this ain't, no, this might be a few parts because this is horrible how they've cheated me. So that day when I went in and I got the copy of the warranty and came back and said, see, look, this is my warranty. I'm only paying 100 the sales, the sales guy that sold me the warranty at that point, he's like, no, you only pay a hundred, blah, blah, I'll go over there with you. I was so drained. I was like, you know what? Just give me the paperwork you printed out. When I come back, I'll give it to them. Okay. I come back the second week, bring my car in. Now, the first week I just pulled up, like I, I would have been able to get it fixed, right? The first week I would have been able to get it fixed if I had handed over the $300 or if they didn't drain me all day and I didn't just, I mean, I should not have stayed there in the state I was in. I was very upset, so that's why I love. I come back, pull up, thinking I'm going to fix my car. Oh, you got to make an appointment. <laughs> now I got to make an appointment. Now tell me how this makes sense. I pull up. This time he actually diagnosed why the check engine light was on. He just sat, he didn't say nothing about money or nothing. He stuck the thing in there and said, oh, it's a hose. It's not bad, but it's acting up. You probably have to get it fixed. And I'm like, well, my brake light keeps coming on though. And then he goes, they, it was him and a lady that came over. And instead of just diagnosing to see what was wrong, or maybe they had to have it looked at, I don't know, but they just assumed that I had hit my emergency brake and that was the problem. So they started playing with the emergency brake, turn the car on and off. And when you first turn the car on, that brake light don't come on. I'm thinking it's a sensor. Just like my check engine light, in my mind, I'm thinking gas is expensive. I usually put good gas in it. I, I've been putting cheap gas. I'm sure that's when my light was on. And within the time of me having to make another appointment, the light went off. And I really believe that was it because before it went off, that it showed that the gas thing wasn't tight, but it was. So I know that that's what it had to do with. It's something within that. So now that, that light was off. Okay, so that was week two. So I made the appointment. Oh, but get this. The guy that tells me to make the appointment that actually diagnosed it, gives me the car, tells me to make the appointment for the service. For service, this is important. So I made the appointment for service, thinking this is ridiculous, I was just there. Come my day off, don't feel like sitting there, went there anyway. How are they going to try to tell me again after we just went through this two weeks ago? Well, even though it's only one light on, you have to pay $160 and your deductible if we find something wrong with it. I said, no, I already went through this. I gave them the paperwork. Look, I'm only supposed to pay $100. Now, well, um, and then I, he, he started huffing and puffing and I'm like, show me in writing because i pulled out my um warranty i was like here in writing it says a hundred dollar deductible you need to show me in writing show me in this right here where it says i'm supposed to pay 160 dollars just to like check the light because in my experience through the cars i bought you diagnostic is part of of the warranty how are you not going to know what's wrong with it unless you diagnose it and he oh no no the, we have to charge that first. I t just listen to this. I tell that dude, I'm like, show me. He takes the paper. He starts unfolding it. And you can tell he was just panicking. It's not going to be in here. It's not going to be in here. And then he gets up and he walks away. And he starts talking to some other guy. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to call the warranty place right now. <laughs> Dial the warranty place. He comes back. I guess the other guy was trying to come up with some reason why I had to pay or you know they couldn't have it in writing because it was a lie so he, he motions me over and as he motioned me over I'm on the phone with the warranty people and I'm at I'm telling her I'm in this uh, dealership right now I have a warranty and they're telling me even though I just supposed to pay $100 deductible first they told me I had to pay $320 to look at the lights now they're saying it's $160 she's like is it not covered under warranty and that's towards the repair i said no they want to charge me 160 dollars just to diagnose it and then to fix it charge me the other hundred dollars and she said no that's not correct she said stay on the line i'll send you your uh, warranty she sent it to me online so i was able to see it on my phone but at that point i had been digging i keep everything when I buy a car everything in the glove compartment so I still have to it what she sent me 
written in, in I still have it like I have the paperwork <laughs> so I pulled it out while she was talking I was like oh yeah it's, it's probably my glove department I pull it out she says what page and what line to look at and I look at it and she goes Did, I'm gonna tell you show you where your hundred dollar deductible is so when you go back in there you can talk to them and she showed me and then she goes look at page six now you need to look at the wording in this page six where it says we she said we the warranty people mylar what's it called something like that she said we are responsible for diagnostic we cover diagnostic that's what it said and then she stopped she goes we cover diagnostic see that and then it says if the diagnostic uh what what's found in the diagnostic isn't covered under the mylar warranty then if i decide that i want them to fix my car they can charge uh, a diagnostic fee for what wasn't covered plus whatever fees it takes to uh, fix it. So she's saying the initial diagnostic we cover. She even said you can, they have a representative, each, each branch has a representative they can talk to directly. They know we cover the diagnostic. But if what comes up we don't cover, then they can charge you another diagnostic fee to cover, you know, to cover what they can't, isn't covered un under my warranty. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'm like, great, that's perfect. That's exactly what I thought. And that makes sense. And that's what the paperwork said. She goes, yeah, so I pointed out those two things. So when you go back in there, you can show them. So I go back in there and I, this is what I tell them. I was like, I just got off the phone with her. She said they cover the initial diagnostic. And if whatever uh, pops up as wrong isn't covered under warranty, then if I decide I want you to fix it anyway, then you can charge me a diagnostic for what you need to fix. And that makes perfect sense to me. It's like, oh, if I'm going to use you and it's not covered under my warranty and you need to do this, that, and the other, and you need to find the parts and do that, then charge me for all that. You know, that makes sense because you have to figure it out. Right? <laughs> so I think that makes sense. He said, no, she is wrong. I was like, this is the warranty you sold me. Her name is Lori. Here's the number right here. She even said, if you have any problems, call her. Here, you just call Lori. Just call that number. I'm not calling that number. That's beneath me, he said. <laughs> I said, how is that beneath you? You're selling this warranty to everybody that comes in here, the warranties that these people are paying for per month is paying everybody's salary over there that's fixing cars. I'm not, that's not true. I'm not paying that. I'm, I don't understand why you don't understand what I'm saying. I was like, I don't understand why you don't just talk to the lady. She said that you could call her and talk to her right now and she would explain it to you and you could be on the same page. And I don't need to do all that. I, I don't need to do that. I was like, why? If this is a company you work with and you're selling these, would you not want to be on the same page as the company you work, you're work you working with and you're selling this for? Wouldn't you want to be more professional and act professionally to tell me exactly what she told me or discuss it with her? No, no, I'm not doing that. You just don't understand. When I said that, he, he got up, he's like, I'm done and walked away. <laughs> Now, I may put this clip in, I warn y'all, it's looking rough because I still don't feel that great. Where he just up and walked away and I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll just broadcast this then. <laughs> this is how it, so then I started talking, explaining that where I was and what just happened. The dude just got up and walked away. And the salesperson, because I had my phone out, the salesperson rushes over. He goes, we're going to, we, he's trying to help you. We're going to cover, we're going to cover your, uh, uh, what does it call it? diagnostic fee if so you don't need to you know he starts talking to me like you don't need to be being rude because we're gonna cover it for you that's what he was gonna do I was like no this man just got up walked and turned his back to me and he goes well we're gonna cover that fee so you need to be nice I was like I do not have to be nice I don't have to act any certain way how are you gonna cover a fee I was just told that I shouldn't have to pay in the first place I think I might have that I hope I have that recorded I think I do but it's a black screen because I was so angry and that's what I told him. I don't have to be nice. I, I, don't, I was like, I'm not stupid. I bought a car before. So 
you know. So it gets this part. It gets better. Better-er. Then they're like, oh, okay, well, just bring your car over to the service, and we're going to service it for you. Just take it on over there. So I bring my car over, and the service manager guy, whoever he is, he comes up to take the keys, and he goes, oh, uh, you're going to have somebody pick you up? I said, no, uh, I'm just going to wait here. They said on the phone when I made the appointment, if I'm there before 9 o'clock, it'll be done before the end of the day. And, and then I said that to him. I was like, it, isn't it going to be done before the end of the day? And then he goes, oh, yeah, you should be done. I should have you done by the end of the day. It's not like you pulled up at 2 o'clock. Then I, I definitely wouldn't be able to help you. Right? That's what he said to me. So I'm like, okay. And go sit down, sit in the waiting room, watching stuff on my phone all day, YouTube, whatever. That was hmm, maybe 9.30ish. 2 o'clock roll around. The waiting room, I got a clip of that. The waiting room, when I first sat down, was full. All those people that were there when I first sat down at 9.30 left. A whole other group of people came and sat down. You can see the service guys coming in talking, saying, oh, well, this part and this part, so we got to this, this, this part. Two waiting room groups of people came and left while I was sitting there. So at 2.10, finally, I walk over and I'm like, okay, my, I've been here since 9 this morning. I haven't even heard what's going on with my car. Has he even looked at my car yet? And then the girl goes, oh, I'll call him, I'll call him, and he can check on it. First, she asked me my name so she could look it up. And I guess she ain't find nothing. And then she goes, oh, I'll call him. Oh, he's still on the phone, but he's going to talk to you. He never came in to talk to me. I had to walk out there, and I'm like... Do you know what's wrong with my car? Have you looked at it yet? Because I've been here since 9 and the whole group of people came and left twice. The waiting room filled up the empty twice. And you haven't even told me what's wrong. And he goes, well, you, you scheduled just to drop your car off. And that's what he said to me. I made an appointment just to leave my car there. That's what he's saying, right? What text did I get two days ago and this morning? Hi, Annette Galliana. You have a service appointment at 10 a.m. I was there at 9 with Galliana. While I'm sitting there, within the first hour of the five and a half hours of me sitting there, hi, Annette, if you need anything through your service, Reply to Dwayne at Galley Anna Service. I walked out there. That man told me, "I met, you just made an appointment to drop your car off. We haven't gotten a chance to look at it. I was like, I just saw the waiting room filled and clear twice in the five and a half hours I've been sitting here. Well, they were oil changes. Oil changes go fast. I said, no, they were not oil changes. I'm not stupid, dude. The service people were going in there talking to people about this part, this part, you can find this, or oh, this this much, we're going to have to charge you this. Those weren't no freaking oil changes. And I said that to them, those were not oil changes. I could hear them talking to each other. Those weren't oil changes. Well, most of them, majority of them were oil changes. He had a smirk on his face the whole time because they were just pissed off that I knew enough not to pay them over whatever amount they decided to make up plus the warranty deductible. So then he started arguing with me, well, you didn't have to wait here. You should just drop the car off. You just made an appointment just to drop the car off. You, I'm like, you you sat in there and waited. You didn't have to do that. I'm like, you have a waiting room. I didn't hear you tell anybody else not to go in your waiting room. Isn't that what your waiting room is for? And then he's like, well, you just, you made an appointment. Well, you made an appointment. I tried so hard to uh, video this part, and I wish I would have. Uh, you made an appointment to drop your car off. I explained that to you when you dropped it off. I said, no, you didn't. When I came the first time, you gave me a card, said call, and set up an appointment. Both you and the lady I made the appointment with said that it would be done by the end of the day. Also, this morning, when I gave you the keys, you said... Oh, yeah, it should be. I should have it done by the end of the day. It's not like you pulled up at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. 
And he had the nerve to say, because it was like 2.30, 2.40 by that point. You didn't give me the whole day. Um, we haven't had time. There's one more car in front of you. If I saw the people that were there when I got there get their car serviced and leave, and I'm sitting there by myself. I got a clip of that. This was before the second round of people showed up. My car should have been after that whole round of people left, right? A whole second round of people come in, sit down, getting their star service, getting called out, here, here's your paperwork, here's your keys, and I'm still sitting there. But he didn't have time, they didn't have time to look at my car, is what he said. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm done with this. I know why they're treating me like this. I said, you know what? If you still haven't been able to look at it at almost 3 o'clock, just give me my keys and I will have my dad come down here with me. I'll just have my dad come here and look, get this done because I know you're going to treat him better than you treat me. Oh, no. Well, no, that's not true. You, you, The appointment you made was just for, for you to drop your car off. I, I needed to have time to look at it. We didn't have time to look at it. Contradicted every word he ever said and then I was like you know what no I'm just gonna have my dad look at it come out come out here so you can look at it you can you can talk to him and you don't want to talk to him today when he's just off work so we're gonna come another day and then you you guys can uh, deal with him in a nicer way than you're treating me all right so then I, I go get my keys. He goes, your car's just, he was so rude. Your car's just over there. Which I don't think that he realizes that's a workspace. And that's the kind of workspace where if something happens, they need to know what happened. So there's cameras, right? <laughs> there's cameras. So you can see him being rude and hitting on the wall. He said, he was smiling. He was smiling the whole time. He was so happy that they made me sit there for no reason all day. So then I was like, just give me the keys. And I'll come back with my dad. Okay, you have a good day. I yell back, you have a good day. And, you know, gave him the gesture of, it was a gesture that kids shouldn't do. And for some reason, because I just turned and he yelled that to my back. Because, you know, a little coward, little cowardly dude. I'm almost out from under the little hood thing. And he's yelling, you have a nice day. So I, you have a nice day, back to him. And some lady gasped. <gasps> she was like shocked that I flipped him the bird. Are you kidding me after what they just put me through? And him yelling, you have a nice day, thinking he won. No, honey, you did not win. I have the text saying your service appointment. I have the card you gave me with the time that you told me my appointment was. I have time stamp phone calls to your service department and I have the footage that I'm, I'm taping here. So anybody just, first of all, do not go to, let me give you the right name because mm -mm, how they just treated me, the Galliana, it's Galliana Dodge Chrysler Jeep in Fort Myers, do not, do not use them you see look at how they treated me look at can you believe this is why people say that the weirdest things happen why i don't know i don't know why but don't and if you do even this girl had a car mechanic say don't buy the warranty you don't don't even buy the warranty why because it don't cover nothing it doesn't even cover anything oh and this too when I called the lady and she was explaining to me how, no, that's not true. She kept saying, my or my, however you say it, we covered diagnostics. That is just not true. She told me I had three warranties. I was like, what? There's like a gap warranty, the extended warranty, and there was another one she said. And I need to figure out what that one is and what that one covers. She pulled up all three on that car, and he's telling me I only had two. He only said I had the gap and um what's that one called? And the maximum care one that doesn't cover like brake pads and stuff, and they're so scared whatever's wrong with my car is covered under here. 
that they were pushing me so bad to just pay $160 anyway, even if it's not. It just wasn't making no sense. So anyway, do not go there. And I left reviews online. I blew it. I lit, I lit them up, dude. By tomorrow, <laughs> I lit them up. Anywhere that you could leave a review, I left a review. I copied and pasted it. Let them know how he was all smug. Like, you have a good day. Yeah, I did that. And legally, for them to try to... I don't know what they're doing that they don't want to just fix the car under the warranties uh, guidelines. And I just seriously, I keep thinking about it. How can they just make up an amount and say, you got to pay $160 for us to check that light and $160 for that, you check that light. And you're supposed to agree ahead of time, but there's no paperwork on that showing that. And I kept saying, show me that in writing. This is $100 in writing. Where's that? Well, that if you agree to it, then he was going to give you that paperwork. Well, I'm not agreeing to it. I'm not agreeing. I told him I'm not agreeing to anything that's not in this warranty sitting right here. That's what I told him. He was so mad. So anyway, don't go buy no warranty. That, that is some sales thing where they pressure you to do it. But look look at how they treat me. Even the warranty pay people are like he's wrong. And he's doing this to me. So y'all like... Galliana, Galliana Dodge Chrysler Jeep of Fort Myers. They got their whole block down there. Y'all just beware of them. All right, I just got off the phone with this Mylar vehicle protection plan where I bought my van. And I'm here right now at the Galliana Dodge Jeep place. Okay, first they told me it was going to be $320 just to look at my car. All right, and then I argued with them that I have a warranty. So then they said, "Oh well, uh, under your warranty, it's a hundred dollars." So it went from three hundred and twenty to a hundred dollars. Right? Then I called the warranty place, and they told me, "Oh, you don't have a warranty." So I come in and get the warranty printed out by this guy right here. So now this guy is telling me he he refuses to call. The Mylar, here he goes, Mylar Bill Protection. He refuses to. Well, it should have been paid for in the first place. We shouldn't have to come up here three days on my day off. And the Mylar lady just told me it was supposed to be paid for. The Mylar lady just told me it was paid for. She just told me this on the phone. I told him to call and verify. You ain't doing me no favor. I bought a car before. And when I got here, this waiting room was full. I'm the only one here. She called over the loudspeaker so they can give me an update on my car. At two on the dot. Uh, I don't know how long it's been since then, but nobody's called back. So this is definitely on purpose. And I'll let you know again.